boots for preppers. Hey everybody, this is Michael with Asymmetrical Preparedness. Behind me here, I got a bunch of boots that I choose to include in my system. Your system may be different. We all have different styles, different demands, different feet, widths, lengths, all this stuff like that, and demands upon our footwear. But I wanna show you what I feel is a good selection of footwear for the prepper in an SHTF scenario to cover pretty much all the bases, all the terrains, weather, and anything else you may get into in an SHTF scenario as a prepper. With all that may be facing us in an SHTF scenario, footwear is vitally important. Anybody that's been boots on the ground in the military, anybody that's been a hiker, a backpacker, a mountain climber, into alpine stuff, into running, they understand how important footwear is. We can save a lot of money in our preps in different ways, but footwear is one that I would never skimp on. Two things in my life that I don't skimp on for sure is footwear and my bed, my mattress, what I sleep on, because those two things right there apply a lot to your health. So what features and or situations am I primarily thinking about? Well, for me, it's predominantly weather related. So to have a variety of shoes and boots that fit those parameters is vital. We don't want to be without proper footwear in an SHTF scenario. So let me get into the selection I've chosen here. This is kind of my system here. First off, I will start with the Solomon Speedcross 5s. Amazing shoes. Not waterproof, but they dry super quickly. They are lightweight, super, super lightweight. Awesome traction. And these are the most comfortable shoe I've ever worn in my entire life. It's like wearing a pair of socks. The other day we found a pair at Goodwill. It happened to be my wife's size, brand new for 20 bucks. They have now become her favorite shoe, as they are mine. I love, absolutely love these shoes. Good looking shoe. The performance is amazing. Anytime in warm weather, dry weather, um, even wet weather, because they dry so quickly, great shoes. Trail running, doing anything outdoors, hiking, tactical training. These things have offer great mobility, super lightweight, amazing traction, and they're so, so, so comfortable. So this is a great option for warm weather, dry weather, and or wet weather if your feet can dry quickly for an SHTF scenario or in everyday life. So think about this, not sponsored by the way, not sponsored by Solomon or any of these companies here that I'm showing today, but I love Solomon as you will notice, it's great shoes. The Vask Talus. Vask makes some really good boots. These, however, are not my favorite pair of boots, but they're still in my system because they're pretty, pretty good all around boots. This would be a next step up from the Speedcross 5s because these are waterproof. They do have a little bit of stability built in. A hiking boot, general hiking, walking, running boot. I just got off the treadmill with these things earlier today. I rucked with my ruck and my defensive long tool on for three miles. And then I, took, I ditched the ruck and ran for another three miles. So you can run in them, walk in them, hike in them, great. They are waterproof, they stand up. These are very old. I've had these things for probably at least eight years and they are still in pretty decent shape. They are darker in color than they normally are right now because I did just put on a coat of wax sealant to help keep them nice and waterproof because they are older. So the membranes inside the Gore-Tex membranes, whatever it is they use, ultra dry. So it's probably their proprietary, Vasque Ultra Dry. Those break down over time. 
So if you have the full grain leather, it's great because you can treat it and keep it waterproof for longer. These are great boots, they've lasted a long time. You can see signs of wear on it, yes, because it is an old boot, but it's one you might think of. The thing I've noticed about Vask boots is they're for narrow feet. If you have wide feet, maybe their wide settings would work for you, but this is just a normal setting, and it's a, I don't have wide feet at all, and it is a narrow, a narrower boot. Uh, and I have very high arches, very high arches. I wear an eight and a half to nine in men's regular width, uh, but I have very high arches. And um, so my selection of footwear may be different than yours, but the Vask is a good company, good boot. This is the Talus. The next step up, I love this boot. This is the Solomon 4D GTX backpacking boot. What is the difference between that hiking boot I just showed you and a backpacking boot? Hiking is without a pack. Backpacking is with a pack, obviously. So there's more support, there's more structure to the boot to allow you to carry the heavier weights included with backpacking and or rucking and or bugging out. This is waterproof. It is an amazing boot. This, those uh, Speedcross 5s that I just showed you, and these boots are my absolute favorite two pairs of shoes I've ever worn in my life. I love these boots. These are great quality boots. These are fairly newer. I don't know, I've had these probably two or three years. And as you can see, they're still in great condition. I take good care of them. I use the that spray-on waterproofing because they're not leather. They're mostly synthetic. There are There is some leather to it. They have good traction, as you can see. They are, let me see, what are they? Yeah, this is Gore-Tex. This is branded Gore-Tex right there, it says. It is, they're super, super comfortable. I have rucked, hiked, whatever in these boots for miles and miles and miles and miles and miles over courses of days and days. And my feet have always been comfortable and they just work very, very well. Uh, this is one of those boots that if I was gonna say and recommend one, good pair of boots as one boot close enough to does it all, this would be the boot I would choose. Now, if you can afford to have a system, like I have, I, I've bought it over years and used some really good sites that offer like military and expert discounts and stuff like that. So it does get expensive, but like I said, footwear is where you wanna spend your money. This boot, I would say, if I was gonna select one boot out of all these, to kind of this general purpose boot to do everything fairly well, this boot is what I would choose. If I had one choice of footwear to wear in an SHTF scenario, if I was headed out the door to bug out or to leave everything else behind, I would put these on. So it's a great choice. It's a good looking boot, very comfortable, lightweight for what it is, and just good all around choice. These I think are about 260 bucks. So this is some money here, but I feel it's well worth it. This is the Oboe's Bridger 8 inch boot. I believe this one has the, yes, this one has the 200 milligrams of Thinsulite in it. If you get the 10 inch, you can get 400 grams of Thinsulite in it. Great boot. What I really love about this boot is full grain leather. So you can treat it with that wax, you can melt it in and all that stuff. Very, very good. You can keep this thing waterproof and it has their, um, their B-Dry system, which is like their Gore-Tex style membrane. Really good quality boots. I've had these for a long time. That's why you see the shiny spots. I just had to use some shoe goo to keep the treads in place, because they come off. And I, but I've had these boots for 12, at least 12 years, and they have stood the test of time. They have very good traction also. These are more of a boot than like, the other ones I've shown you, the Solomon 4D GTX, is more like a hiking or backpacking shoe. They're more shoe-like. They're lightweight. They also don't have the, I don't, I don't really care for the clunky sole, the heavy sole that like clumps down and clumps around, you know, making a lot of noise. I like the, more the shoe-like soles, but this boot, however, when it was new, I didn't care for it as much at first because of that, the clunkiness. But if that's the kind of boot you like, 
it may work great for you. This is another one of those all around, almost do everything fairly well boot. So this would be probably my number two choice if I had to grab one pair of shoes or boots and get out the door. It has always kept my feet dry. It is still, it is light in color right now because I'm about to do another treatment. I've been going through all my footwear since the seasons are changing and making sure that they're all waterproofed, that they're re-treated and all that stuff. So this will be receiving a treatment and then it'll be like really dark brown again. I like the coloring though, very comfortable boot. And over time, as I've worn it, it has become less clunky. It has become, the sole has become a lot more pliable and all that stuff. So this is a very good option. I forget how much these are, but very good option. Uh, it's the only pair of oboes I've ever owned, but they work very well. Like I said, I've had to, this boot actually had five different places on the, on the sides of the sole here where I had to shoe goo. But I've had these boots for 12, 13 years. So, you know, that's a little understandable. And the upper on these still looks almost brand new. So if you take care of your stuff, you can make it last a long time. It's one reason why buying quality matters, because it lasts. This is the Solomon Tundra Pro. My absolute favorite boot so far for cold weather environments. Has built for use with crampons, which is really nice. And I forget exactly, it has their, uh, let me see, what's it called? The Aerotherm, Aerogel insulation and their CS or C5 waterproofing system. Very, very, very good boot. My feet tend to be cold. So these combined with some Baffin Polar Extreme socks work great, keep my feet warm. If you notice, there's a little bit of a shiny line around the edge here. That's where I put either shoe goo or some Gorilla Glue or Super Glue, just to make sure that that seal is good. And then because this is not leather, this is actually synthetic, it's like a plastic type stuff, but it works really well. I treat it with the spray style uh, waterproofing. Great boot. I haven't owned this pair for very long. It is expensive. I think it's up close to $300. But if you are in extreme cold weather, this is definitely a good option. There's a lot of good options out there but I really like this boot. It has decent traction. It's made for snow, ice, cold weather, uh, stuff like that. It's very comfortable. See that nice little, uh, you can see there, the, the kind of like a fur lining. Uh, very, very comfortable boot. It is definitely wide. It feels wide in the foot, but it is comfortable and it is good for use with thicker socks. I bought the size that I needed for thicker socks on purpose because part of keeping your feet warm is the loft. You need that dead air space in there. You don't want too much because you want it to fit properly, but you need enough in there to make sure that your socks work in conjunction with the boot. And another thing is you can get wool inserts like the shoe or boot liners that go in there because a lot of your heat is lost via conduction, which is touching something. So if you can keep that, the bottom of your foot, prevent conduction from the ground when you're walking, that'll go a long ways in keeping your foot warm also, combined with the socks and a good quality boot. If I was gonna be out in an extreme cold weather environment, this would probably be the boot I would take. There may be other options for extreme, I'm talking like negative 60 or worse, maybe better options. I forget where this boot is rated. I think it's rated down close to that negative 30, negative 40 degrees or something like that. But you gotta understand also, everybody's different and that is where it will keep you from getting frostbite and keep you alive, not necessarily comfort. But this is a great choice, great boot. The only thing I don't like about this boot is it only comes in black. But I do, however, have white spray paint just in case I am up in a, uh, say my primary bug out location and there's lots of snow. I can just, you know, shoot a couple lines of white on it to break up the black pattern to allow it to blend in more effectively in that environment. Or if you wanted to hit it with any other kind of spray paint, you can do that also. Because of synthetic material, it'll probably work very well. However, most time, yeah, it's not really needed but this is a great option for a boot. And this rounds out my 
system. Proper footwear is very important. Just want to reiterate that. It is an area where saving your money and getting good quality footwear will potentially save your life someday. So please take this seriously. Take a look at these options. Do your own research. These options may not be the best for you based on your environment. Like I said, how you wear your footwear, your weight, your body type, your feet, your arches, your width, all those kind of things. But I do feel that these one, two, three, four, five, remind myself, five pairs of boots are a great system that will provide the proper footwear for any situation that I may be in. So take a look at these, but do your own research. Like I said, not sponsored by any of these companies at all. Take a look around, do your research, save the money, spend what you need to, protect your feet. Have a wonderful day and blessings to you and yours.